Welcome to Bits About Books, the home for conversations with authors of breakthrough books on sales, marketing and business. Founders, entrepreneurs and individual professionals, we all need to keep track of ideas that are helping create our today and tomorrow. Bits About Books will strive to find those books and speak to their authors, go behind the scenes and understand what inspired the authors to write the books that they did and how they went about doing so. Through our conversations, we hope to gain insights that will help us to get the most out of our efforts. I'm your host Shubhanjan Sarkar, founder of Pitchlink, the next generation buyer-seller engagement platform where our mission is to make buying easy. Over the years that we have been bringing you stimulating conversations with authors of breakthrough books in business, sales and personal development, some conversations resonated with the listeners of this podcast. For the next few episodes, we will bring you some of those conversations as they remain stimulating and relevant. Way back in September 2019, when we launched Bits About Books, I had this fascinating conversation with Amit Agarwal, author of the book, The Ultimate Sales Accelerator. What struck me most was the philosophical angle and the universal idea that Amit presented in the book, one he tried and tested across his many sales leadership roles besides personal ones. Enjoy. Today we have with us Amit Agarwal, author of the book, The Ultimate Sales Accelerator. What is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary? Now, you know, these two things were always there in my mind and I had that desire of writing books and there was a lot of topics which were going in my mind. You know, one particular day, uh, I was sitting in around July 2018, I was sitting and having breakfast with my wife and suddenly a question came. If somebody asked me, what is the one thing that has contributed to my success in sales maximum and what would I respond? And the answer was ready. You know, and that's what this books uh, uh, talk about. You know, one surprisingly powerful strategy to create epic sales in business and in life. You know, so the book, entire book, talks about only one strategy. Our guest today is Amit Agarwal, author of the book The Ultimate Sales Accelerator. Amit is a salespreneur who believes that sales is a social entrepreneurship because every sale is an opportunity to bring joy, generate livelihood, create customer value and build wealth for the economy. With professional selling experience in 23 countries and personal selling experience of more than 43 years, he believes that we all are in sales because we are all selling a product, service or an idea. Now on to this great episode of Bits About Books with Amit Agarwal. Amit, welcome to Bits About Books. This is where we talk to authors about path-breaking books in uh, business and sales. And I'm delighted to have you on the show. Pleasure is mine, Shubhanjan. Thanks for having me. You wrote the book, The Ultimate Sales Accelerator. And uh, yes. there has been quite a bit of sharing and uh, writing about in LinkedIn. Uh, I just wanted to know start from the beginning how did you think of writing a book i know you have a long illustrious career in sales but why why a book so you know this happened because of, uh, of you know few people and then set of question so first gentleman is uh, vishen lakhiani um, i watched a video of his which says three most important questions in life and uh, the the video in short goes like, what would you like to experience? What would you like to contribute? And what would you like to grow as? Okay. So I filled that section and in contribution section, I have around two, two and a half years before I had written uh, publishing a book. That was one of the items I have written in the contribution section. So that I think that was the first thing, which when you think about something, when you write it, you know, a seed is sown right, during that time. The second thing happened is there is a book called The One Thing, which is one of my favorite books and uh, which talks about one particular question. The question goes like this. What is the one thing 
I can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary. Now, you know, these two things were always there in my mind and I had that desire of writing books and there was a lot of topics which were going in my mind. You know, one particular day, uh, I was sitting in around July 2018, I was sitting and having breakfast with my wife and suddenly a question came. If somebody asked me, what is the one thing that has contributed to my success in sales maximum and what would I respond? So now that one thing, if you notice, the question came as one thing which was influenced subconsciously by the book, correct? And the, uh, the contribution part was influenced by Vishen Bakhani's video. And all of that, this came in, for, in form of a question. And the answer was ready. You know, and that's what this books uh, uh, talk about. You know, one surprisingly powerful strategy to create epic sales in business and in life. You know, so the book, entire book talks about only one strategy. Of course, there are 10 chapters you know, and the book unfolds. Primarily, it is about only one thing. So that's the brief about how the, the book came about. When you went about uh, writing the book, these chapters, how, how have you structured the book actually? Yes, so what happened is, uh, you know, for when I started writing the book, the first thing which I did is that I wrote the, uh, once the one, one thing was clear, you know, that, that one strategy. So I wrote the the chapters first, I mean wrote means gave the the heading first and what was interesting is that uh, I incidentally wrote each chapter name as a question. If you notice uh, in the book, you know, right from why this book from where did where it start chapter one to chapter two, what is use case selling and so on. All of them are a question and the reason it is a question is because I recognized that question creates possibilities and participation. So for example, if, uh, if I tell that uh, the color of sky is blue, correct, uh, you will, I, mostly you will say yes, correct. Now if I change the question and if I ask people what is the color of sky, uh, some of them may say it's blue, some of them may say it is dark in the night. Some of them may say it, the color varies throughout the day. So you see what is happening is when we are asking question, there is more possibilities and more part, participation. And that influenced me in uh, creating uh, all these chapters as questions. Now, how does the flow go of the chapter is that, you know, I am again influenced by a book called Start With Why. Start With Why by Simon Sinek, correct? And uh, that book, actually inspired me you know to do everything with a why so if you notice the first chapter of the book is also why this book then the second chapter goes to define what is that one strategy you know uh, in this case i can name the strategy i can't go into detail of that because i think that is left to the readers to uh, unravel the mystery the name of the strategy is use case selling that is the second chapter what is the use case selling the third chapter talks about why this one strategy works better than the other sales strategies available in the market. Then chapter 4, 5, 6 actually are chapters in B2B experiences, B2C experiences and personal life. And that is what also makes this book different because if you have seen the back of the book which says that narrating 31 experiences in B2B, B2C and uh, personal life. Okay. So those three chapters uh, make the uh, true experience in these three categories. And then chapter seven talks about after understanding what is this one strategy, how does it work in both business and life? The question is, why does it actually work? Does human brain has anything to do with it? And this chapter, chapter seven opens up that how does human brain works? and why this strategy is the number one strategy in sales. Then chapter eight and nine talks about five mindsets and three tools. You can consider them as right hand, left hand of the strategy. Correct. So how these five mindset, which are in chapter eight and chapter nine, three tools, they combine with this one strategy 
and make a person very successful uh, in implementing this one strategy and the last chapter is about who is the future sales person you know so uh, and how is this future sales person connected to this one strategy so overall these are the 10 chapters uh, very briefly i have covered them would you think that this is something new or is this something that you have sort of simplified for consumption and adoption yes so i think first of all for me uh, i personally believe that uh, in fact the book this book also even before the prologue it starts with uh, what makes us unique right uh, it starts with a note to the reader and i realize that what makes us unique is not our title not our bank balance you know the only thing which makes us unique is our experiences my experiences are different than yours yours are different than somebody else and you know a book is a medium to share our experiences with a broader fraternity isn't it so uh, this book as you will read it you will observe the strategy is also very experiential you know so this strategy while i am in sales professionally from you know 20 plus years personally from 43 years because i believe we all are in sales okay right? uh, fundamentally however i realized this strategy only in 2015 the use case selling in 2015 and it was uh, you know during a meeting with a uh, you know chief marketing officer of of a large bank in asia i can uh, you know i can just walk you through that incident i may not decipher it but i may uh, so for the benefit of your uh, for the audience so what happened is i was in a i just joined a startup and that startup was going through a major pivot as you know startups generally do you know uh, so in that case the company was moving to a new saas business a new vertical which is financial services there was no referenceable client at all and also the product was in very early stage so in in such case we i get a meeting with a large uh, bank cmo of a large bank and as i was waiting in that conference room you know how banking sector is very formal you know uh, very professional very very formal i was uh, waiting in a conference room and i i was thinking what can i do to create value for this uh, august audience you know how can i serve them well and there in you know around 6 to 7 ex- executives entire enter and um, you know the cmo was sitting and the other six of his uh, uh ex- svps were on his right i was sitting on his left and he uh, uh you know he just looked at me uh, and he said uh, mr agrawal we have the best software and customer experience uh, uh, and analytics we have adobe ibm saas we have everything and then he was silent and you know sometime what silence means silence actually meant why are you here correct <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i i said uh, may i ask you three questions he said of course so i asked him first question what is the audience size unique audience size uh, on your website how many visitors are uniquely visiting on your website he said 12 million i said thank you i i asked him the second question i said among these 12 million can you identify existing customers of your bank and new to bank and he was silent and he then he looked on his right you know he, he all his svps you know they were looking down then he looked at me and he said no in a higher tone okay and then i asked the third question which made him angry he, i asked him uh, can you personalize the experience of your existing customers on the website and he said Amit, I just told you I can't even identify existing customers. Then how can I personalize? And there was silence. And the rest is history because that, you know, in a startup when you get your first clients as such a one of the top five banks in, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, Asia, then it's a big thing. It creates a very strong reference. Now I reflected on this, you know, and I figured out that. there is some something i did in this discussion where a, a large bank which has everything on earth all software everything possible you know there is no, no technology piece which is not there correct still that person got interested and of course finally bought it okay. 
so you know i will not unravel this you know there's a structure be- behind this you know of course uh, and that structure uh, you know when the readers read it uh, in the book they will be able to decipher and appreciate it across the uh, various stories uh, so this is uh, this is the beginning of that thought process what i call as use case selling and i have noticed by using this the benefits have been tremendous first is that uh, the number one which i think all sales owners aspire for is to become a trusted advisor isn't it i mean uh, uh, so that is the thing that when we talk like even in the previous discussion if you noticed while the uh, cmo got angry but he was angry not on me he was angry that he couldn't basically you know in spite of buying all these software and his svps uh, and all functions set sitting you know they are not achieved such fundamental capabilities right you know of personalization on website that made him angry of course he was happier that i brought that to his attention and therefore in a way i became a trusted advisor okay so trusted advisor is the number one thing which this this strategy does uh, that is at a holistic level at a material level the, i achieved the following benefits the first is that my organization where i worked earlier in spite of being a early stage startup grew 100% or pivoted startup is the better word grew 100% year on year in in tough situations like working in financial services and all the number two is my income actually tripled in less than 3 years my personal income and the third is there is a life angle to it you know as i mentioned this is strategy in business and in life so i use this strategy in personal life uh, especially with my kids where they develop newer habits for example uh, you know not eating out uh, you know we used to out very regularly now we the the duration has been reduced to one third similarly developing good hygiene in kids brushing teeth all of those so such simple life mechanisms were also influenced by this uh, strategy and that is mentioned in the personal life chapter so if i can achieve this you know uh, i can only imagine what can readers achieve by using this one strategy for use case selling let's take a short break When we come back we will listen to a few of the 31 stories Amit shares in the book as examples of how the one thing impacts all forms of sales. You are listening to a Business Podcast Network original. Podcasting is the fastest growing content marketing opportunity which is untapped. We can help you craft your audio strategy and help leverage the wide reach and easy streaming capability that the smartphone penetration provides. It is easy, it is powerful and personal. Talk to us to find out how podcasting can help you build your brand and reach out to your targets like never before. Write to us at bpn@bizcast.in. That is bpn@bizcast.in. Business Podcast Network. Podcasts end to end. Welcome back to this delightful discussion with Amit Agarwal, author of the book The Ultimate Sales Accelerator. 31 stories make up this book. Let us listen to some from Amit. You, you have narrated uh, 31 experiences. cases, experiences, yeah. yeah, whatever you call it. Yeah. So, would you like to uh, elaborate on a couple of them? So, there is one there are sometimes situations where you say no to a customer, Sumanjan, correct? Uh Uh, so there was a situation as i was mentioning you we pivoting in one of the organization and the one customer came and he said i want to i want to do uh, retargeting with you and retargeting if you observe is basically if you go to amazon.com and if you look at a smartphone and then you don't buy it correct and then you go to ndtv.com or facebook you see the same phone uh, as an ad correct so that's what in simple terms is retargeting uh, so whereas in that organization we were moving from retargeting based business to a more holistic marketing automation personalization business across channels not only one channel retargeting a multiple channels okay? so that is what uh, you know i was taking care of so this particular client uh, you know was a insurance aggregator and the uh, client came and Uh, you know, he spoke to the sales owner and said, "I want to do retargeting." So the sales owner reached out to me. I said, "You know, if they want to do retargeting, 
the share, share the coordinates of the other division within our company who only still does that retargeting. We do the marketing automation and personalization across channels. So he, he tried that, didn't work. Client said, no, we want to work with you only. So he said, can you at least talk to them? I said, okay. So the client came and you know he said, uh, we want to do retargeting with you. I said, you know, politely, I said, you know, there is a better team for that. Kindly, I can connect you with them. He said, can you listen to my requirement? I said, of course. He said, right now, when, let's say, you come to my website as a customer and you look at Honda Civic as a car, and Honda Civic as a car has a premium of, let's say, 8,200. And that car is of blue in color. Now, when you go away, you don't buy that insurance. All I can show is a car, you know, and the same car is shown to everybody, you know, whether it is you or whether it is somebody else. Whereas actually what you did, you saw a Honda Civic. You were looking for a Honda Civic, which is blue in color and the premium is 8,200, correct? I said, yes. Said nobody in insurance industry is doing that, you know, in retargeting also in insurance we want to be the first in that can you help us right now this was interesting generally what happens is a sales owner like me is selling to the uh, customer correct here the customer was selling and the reason i said yes i said yes we will do it immediately you know uh, why because he shared something which is unusual correct nobody in insurance industry at least that time four or five years before had done this you know, for me it was an opportunity to create something new for the customer who is who's very ready for it and more importantly create a reference story which is one of first in in the industry okay so this is a story now there is a structure to it i as i said the when the readers read it they will be able to see that structure of use case selling which is a four part structure in each of these stories so this is one of them where not i didn't sell somebody else sold an idea to me of doing something which neither the organizational strategy was aligned nor i was correct okay? <laughs> and we did it and by the way the advantage of that was uh, that there were so many references created because of that one one implementation we did in the early stages that people say these guys are doing something phenomenal it's something completely different and the one liner which was used is they are doing e commerce kind of personalization and insurance. Okay. So, this is again, there are so many stories other than this. Sure, sure, sure. That, that's great. So, so uh, just as a as a aside to this, uh, this, this thrust that you have, uh, do you think that the buyers fundamentally are far more in control of the selling process today than in the past? Of course, I think with the, you correct, uh, Shumanjan, with the, and primary reason is the buyer is more empowered in terms of uh, information they have, you know, uh, they, I think there's a lot of research being done on this the new age sales where I think there's a percentage, I think 53 or 73, which, which says that before even reaching out to a, uh, to, to a, as an RFP or to reaching out to any vendor, buyers do all their research on internet. Or, or through various forums available, correct? Nowadays days, you look at any particular thing, it is available on internet. For So the buyer certainly is more empowered. However, I have a different point of view on this. You know, uh, Can I share that please? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah thank you. So my, uh, this actually the chapter three of the book also mentions that, that the question is, are we selling to buyer or are we selling to user? And the fundamental point on that is, I believe as important or as informed the person could be, okay, there is always a user in, in that person left. Because if we are selling to a buyer, then creating differentiators, creating creating that, that value proposition becomes difficult because you know, the person is, is in control. Whereas if you are selling to a user, you are selling potentially the unknown needs which the user himself or herself doesn't know. Okay. The, the lot of value creation happens by servicing unknown needs. Correct. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a very famous one-liner from uh, Steve Jobs who said, 
you know that uh, uh, we don't need to ask customer for what they need. We need to tell them, correct? <laughs> so from that perspective, my view, and you will see in the stories also, or experiences also, which are all true, that I have focused on. You know, the, there are three kinds of need. One is known needs that that are met, correct? Then there are known needs that are not met, known needs with resistance to change, and unknown needs. This all together form, forms as Mount Everest of needs, which is given in chapter two. You know, which is one of the cornerstone of this book. So, if we have to move to holistic sales, sales owners have to address. the unmet and unknown needs correct and those can be addressed by looking at buyer as a user as a user not as a buyer and i think that is a that is a uh, the only the thought process is inculcated that when i am meeting a buyer what can i share with him or her which they will not know you, a normal word is called insight shubhanjan Right? <laughs> but when you look at word inside it is also very you know sometimes misused that is the reason you know i am actually mentioning that the concept of user rather than as buyer you know also i am mentioning a concept of mount everest of needs which is if you meet a sales owner just ask ask him this just ask whatever he or she is selling ask him can you please either tell me or document all the needs which are met all the needs which are not met all the needs which are known but resistance to change and all the needs in the area you are selling which are unknown if the sales owner does that he or she is golden and of course their customers will also like them a lot right so that's the drift of uh, you know while the while the buyer is empowered it will be great to look at them with a lens of a user right so that's my personal take and that's what is mentioned in the book as well no no i understand because the user as a persona is a sales out uh, uh, definition right so so when as a sales person i'm looking at you as a potential buyer uh, i am looking at so so that so that's that's the difference between the word customer the customer is a sales out view of the person or the organization and the buyer is the buyer out view right that's yeah. my role correct yeah. so uh, so so yeah, yeah absolutely so i i understand so from the sales person's point of view you need, so so i guess what you are trying to say is that don't only think that this person is giving you money but think Besides, that this person is actually going to enjoy the usage of your product or service for a very long time that that's the framework right that is the framework here uh, where because whenever that we use the word buyer and when we use the word customer in sales whether we like it or not subconsciously subconsciously there is a pressure of closing there is a pr- pressure of this thing no we have to win this deal the moment the word user comes into picture one element one word which is mentioned in the book many times service mindset service mindset comes you know in fact the the last chapter the last epilogue of the book mentions the new definition of sales you know which is as for serve serve with authenticity love expertise and smile that is sales not the normal uh, sales which is high pressure uh, all of that serve with authenticity love expertise and smile so the user view actually connects with the word serve much better that's what i have seen yeah. wonderful that's a great point a great note to end this uh, chat uh, thank you amit i really appreciate your time and uh, i i wish you all the best with the book uh, i know it's out now and uh, uh, i think you are a great doing a great job promoting it and uh, and whatever you are doing uh, uh, all success to you bits about books is brought to you by pitchlink the buyer seller engagement platform pitchlink makes buying easy by enabling high quality engagement between buyers and sellers through its presentation and discussion modules Sellers create customized sales narratives using sales collaterals and personal videos and reach out to prospects through a non-intrusive buyer qualified engagement. Pitchlink requires no installation or download and holds the entire repository of sales collaterals and buyer seller conversations. 
Talk to us to know more about how you can engage with customers without intrusion. Call us on 9902163132. Thank you very much, uh, Subhanjal. I have only been one wish that uh, may the this book and the learnings in this book create epic sales in business and in life for millions of people. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today on Bits About Books, where we talk to authors about breakthrough books on sales, marketing, and business. We hope this conversation helped inform and motivate as we all navigate a rapidly changing business environment. For us, these are enlightening conversations enriched with knowledge and expertise. We encourage you to go out and buy the book to learn firsthand and implement some of the great ideas we discussed today. We hope to have you with us again in the next exciting episode of Bits About Books. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast platforms like iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcast from and give us a rating while you are at it. This Biscast original podcast is produced for Pitchlink, the next generation buyer seller engagement platform where the mission is to make buying easy. Hosted by Subhanjan Sarkar and produced by Rajiv Aditya. See you next time and have a wonderful day.